There we go. The recording has started. So any questions on this diagram? No. 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 Good. No, nope. so you guys got that. That's those are important definitions. Okay. Adhesion, cohesion, and gravitational water. Yeah. Field capacity, negative one third bar. No, this area will be filled with air. This is water that's held at the tension that plants can pull it up. And this is water that's held at a tension that the plants cannot pull it up. So it's held so tightly to the soil particle that the plants can't get it. So that's between like negative 1,000 bars and negative 31 bars. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep. And then we left off last time. Okay, so So we're going to talk about conservation now for this last part of it. And uh, does this look familiar to anybody? I mean, like, did we look at the slides already or if we know where no, that have is? You, have you seen a pond that looks like this? Oh, yeah. What are you seeing? Um, I see algae. Yeah, the park manager is probably throwing fertilizer too close to the water source or it's making its way down to the water source somehow. Yeah, I'm seeing, you know, not really good maintenance at that that point. There's, uh, you know, it's it's terrible look. And if that's your irrigation pond, you're you're really in for some trouble. So that's of uh, I think the, the safety and health of the golf course really starts at the ponds and particularly shallow. Uh, irrigation ponds that get really warm in the summer are going to have a lot of these uh, eutrophication problems. And we're going to talk about some ways to try to not have that happen. And I, I think really this is the most important stuff uh, for you uh, to learn. So, uh, so this is kind of a picture that I like to show just how much of the earth is water. 97% um, uh, of the earth is water. Um, and here's some terms. So you might want to make note of, eva of evaporation, transpiration, precipitation, runoff, and percolation. And I'm going to talk about each of these as we move through the slides as well. So for this is a native environment. So with no input from man, we're going to have precipitation coming down on the hill here. Runoff is any water that doesn't have time to go in. So that's one of the reasons oftentimes with, uh, with sprinklers, you want to run them for a little while. And as soon as it would puddle, stop, go to another section, have them come back. Um, not just try to put all the water down at once because any, any areas where there's slope, that's going to pull soil and nutrients and everything into this pond. Uh, this here. Uh, infiltration is the water that goes into the ground. So sometimes that groundwater can come back up uh, and then eventually would go into the ocean. So water that's in the ocean is not going to be useful for plants, for grass, but once it evaporates and then comes down and it's rain, it is. So do you guys see how that's a cycle? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So just like we've talked about the nitrogen cycle, we've talked about the carbon cycle. This is a water cycle. Um, we talked about those terms. Uh, so one of the problems, uh, and, and I think this is, this is the, the big problem for man. So I'm going to let the clock I'll ring.
our, our meters of hardscape. So the top of roofs, parking lots, any of those areas, that just speeds the water up. And as we're going to see from this next slide, this slide here, when we put hardscapes in there, we increase runoff. And I really believe that part of the reason we have so much trouble with hurricanes now more than before is because of all these hardscapes. That water gets back to the creeks and the rivers so fast that it hits the ocean when the storm surge is still happening. So it causes that storm surge to be even more. Uh, oftentimes we'll get a hurricane that'll stall and just keep throwing rain and then it pushes the ocean up too. And that's what happened in Jacksonville, if you recall, uh, a couple of years ago. And that was devastating for that uh, area. So we can, we can do better. And that's the reason I show this slide is one of the things you can do is have a permeable surface for parking cars. So this is a, a parking lot that can be turf. Um, it doesn't get, it's got some metal in it, but the metal allows water to go through. So percolation is gravitational water that percolates below the roots uh, and may enter the water table. Okay. So sources, and, and I think oftentimes people really get confused. The, the source is really important. Um, when you take groundwater, that's trillion year old water, water that, you know, oftentimes the water that we get in North Carolina comes from Florida in the aquifer there. So natural rainfall would be the first thing you would want to use and protect. Uh, surface water would be next and, and then groundwater would be your last resort. So I think sometimes more county people tend to think because they have a well that pumps so many gallons, they have unlimited free water. And uh, in a lot of ways, that's a selfish way uh, for people to think about it. Again, we talked about 2,500 gallons of water to produce one pound of beef. Uh, conservation will preserve water resources, increasing yield, uh, reducing runoff erosion, uh, erosion, flooding, and pollution. So um, all this stuff, and this was gone over in the other lectures. So do you guys have questions on this? Not so far, I don't. No, I okay. don't. Yeah, really. So it's pretty straightforward stuff. The thing that I'm most, uh, most concerned about is that hardscape. And I think uh, e even a golf course can get a lot of bad raps from environmentalists, but it can keep water. It, it should be a bowl and a sink and a place for water to be saved and keep it from getting to the ocean so uh, so much faster. Okay, so, uh, and then one of the, here Chase, this should be uh, a familiar sight to you. Yeah, it's my wash pad. What's unique about this wash pad? Um, it goes straight down into the woods. I mean, we got a little screen behind it so it catches like all of our clippings and stuff if any clippings get in there. All right, but what what's the what's this width here? Oh, it's, uh, it's the width of a skid steer. So you can yeah, exactly the width of the skid steer. So where a lot of places you have to go in there and shovel it out by hand. I know, Patrick, that's a horrible job at Prestonwood, right? Oh, yeah. That's not a fun yeah, job. Yeah, so they can do it with the skid steer. And then you can put this in the mulch pile and this is really good fertilizer remember this is six percent so there's more nitrogen in this uh clipping yield than there is in uh in some fertilizers right so uh effluent water uh using the conserving water even the water that you use to blow off the the machines I know some places will blow them off with leaf blowers first, with a backpack blower. That helps yeah. on the driving range. But I think finding ways to conserve this, these clippings, not just put them in piles. It really bothers me when you get piles of them, you know, in the in the rough. Spread them out. They they're great fertilizer. So uh, just as long as it can get oxygen, the microbes can eat them and decompose, and that can be 
uh, a good thing. But this was pretty innovative. Jeff Hill designed this. Somebody had a question? No, I was just saying it's kind of like how we air file. Like, if, you know, if you got any uh, bare spots, you can throw your plugs over it, you know, help it try to grow in. But, you know, it's kind of technically fertilizer, too. Yeah, so here's, uh, you know, this is a bad sign. What's what's going on here? Looks like there's a bunch of stuff washing into the pond. What's the stuff? Sand. Uh, Looks like mud and yeah, sand. Yeah, yeah so mud. some sort of soil. Probably not sand, Devon, because sand's going to sink down and be heavier, but it's more silts and clays. And then we get that sediment. So you can see all those nutrients, all these plants are growing at that, that outtake. So that could be a problem. And that could be from, you know, construction sites, not good silt fence. Um, one of my recommendations, if anybody's ever working on a construction site, you know, put up three times as much silt fence as you think uh, before that first inspector comes. Because if you don't have enough up, it's, it's going to stop your operation. So it's, it's in everybody's best interest not to have uh, runoff picking up soil, nutrients, fertilizers, and putting them in a pond somewhere. So what could we do to fix this? Find the source. We find where it's running off from. Yeah, there's probably a slope somewhere. Turf grass is one of the best ways to do that. But what can we do to solve this problem? Solve what? Solve the buildup? You have to dig it yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. There's no. Uh, you can dig it out and use it. Put it somewhere else where you where it can be useful. And it, it has a lot of nutrients in it. So uh, the deeper the pond is, the better that's going to be. And you have to do that periodically. Mm. Um. So evapotranspiration, ninety to ninety percent is lost to consumptive use. Uh, not made into plant dry matter. So we understand that, right? The plants, a lot of water goes through the plants. The plants don't have a heart. The only way to move things through the plant is through uh, water moving from the roots to the top. Right. Um, and here's a picture. So this is a big, you know, big runoff event, but they've put turf grass and stapled it down and that'll, that'll help uh, from from runoff. Uh, so we've got an irrigation head here. Can anybody see what's wrong with that? Too high. If it gets hit by a mower, it's just going to bust the top off. Yeah. Well, it's down. You need to raise around it. Yeah, it's it's shooting into this bank. So all it's doing is eroding soil down back into the bunker. Doesn't even get on the. It's it's not aimed right. So. Uh, irrigation efficiency is important. You don't want to be watering uh, the street, you know, water, watering cars when there's a, a water restriction on is a, is a big problem. So uh, being careful and watching that. Um, some ways to improve water intake, which will reduce runoff. Airification, we're going to talk all next week about airification and have a quiz on that next week. Uh, subsoiling would be deep airification. Uh, mulch sometimes. Mulch will help stop the runoff. I know in the garden you guys use quite a bit of mulch uh, around the, uh, the plants that have to be irrigated to keep the soil from getting washed away. And, uh, and, and even wetting agents, right, putting those soaps down, which will help the water move down and not run across uh, the top. Um, adequate nitrogen and phosphorus stimulates good roots, which help hold the soil. Drought tolerant varieties and cultivars, uh, drought, re drought resistant varieties and cultivars, and then even uh, xeriscape. So uh, there's lots of innovative ways to think about it. Uh, this to me is not an innovative way. You know, these, these catch basins and uh, taking a river and putting concrete along the edges of it just is not. Uh, not the way forward, in my opinion. Not only is it ugly, but it's really bad for the environment. Um, trying to keep nitrogen out of the water system. Uh, knowing the difference between a point source and a non-point source. 
Have you has, have you heard that before, anybody? No. So a point source pollutant would be like that pipe where the silt's coming out. So oftentimes we would say factories in uh, places that do uh, do work on uh, you know that create waste, water, hot water, uh, rug factories. Mm -hmm will push out point source and that that's easy to decide what that is non point source would be agriculture a golf course or something that's along a stream there's not a pipe where it comes out but there is a runoff that goes in there so it's much harder for the EPA to regulate non point source than it is to regulate point source mm. um, and some, some of those point sources if, so if the agriculture used salts uh, the fertilizers we use are salts or even roads. You know, up here in Michigan, they put a ton of salt on the roads and that can get uh, into lawns and kill them or it can get into streams and, and make that water really unclean. So that, that can be a problem. And here you can see uh, when there's excess salts on the left of this area that was coming through that sprinkler, um, it, it can even kill turf grass. And that would be a place for using seashore pass ball. So trying to reduce pollution uh, runoff, you know, reduce and runoff, uh, which would reduce erosion, uh, only fertilizing places that it's going to be taken up in the soil, not getting that fertilizer in a place where it's going to get in the water, uh, using integrative pest management, uh, pesticides, um, and storage, storing your stuff in the right place is also important. That's uh, that's the law. You can get in trouble for storing things uh, wrong, and then uh, retaining and restoring the wetland. So really trying to not get any of that sediment going into wetland areas. Um, repairing and buffers are a pretty big deal in golf. Um, we can talk about this is uh, uh, Pinehurst number eight. So this area here, this big pond, uh, this at one point was, if you flush your toilet in Pinehurst, this is where it went. So mm -hmm. they've made, a, they, they've taken an area that was a big negative and made it a, a really a lot of, there's a lot of birds and otters and things, and they have this, you know, low amount of water. So they've created a wetland out of that. And it's a pretty good golf hole uh, as well. At NC State, they took an area uh, where, where the river had been straightened and then they they made it so that it's not They're trying to slow down the flow of water seems to be uh, the answer for uh, riparian buffers so so see how they made this stream so the water's just not going to flow straight they, they try to curve it so that the more the water curves it'll it'll settle out any of those sediments and then they'll put native plants uh, along that and um, and, and that's the way to go. So uh, you guys have a lot of opportunities. It you know it can be tough. It can be expensive sometimes. But I think it, it's wise to uh, make good water decisions. So that's it. So I will turn the quiz on when we're done. I'm going to turn the recording 